what you're looking at this is a motorcycle gas tank it had a huge dent in it i had a local body shop pull the dent for me they put bondo on it i got it back and now today you're going to watch me try to prime this thing base coat it and clear coat it all using rattle cans wish me luck this would not be an easy process what i got to do now is mask off the gas tank in certain areas like this fuel pump area because we don't want paint to get anywhere near this fuel pump. What I've learned about priming, man, well painting, from the first time, mask it off. If you don't mask it off, you're gonna get paint in places you don't want it. <laughs> it's gonna get in there. You think, oh no, paint's not gonna get in there. It's gonna get in there, <laughs> I promise you. something about this top thinking about it's going like this and then what I'll do is just cut the excess off around the hole we should have a pretty good uh, piece it's gonna overlap it a little bit it's gonna kind of force this In that hole. Like I said, man, I made well, some of the biggest mistakes I made the first time was I didn't mask the, I, I didn't do as good of a job with masking. So, like I said, if you don't want it to have paint on it, you need to mask it. You just need to mask it straight up. Because that paint is going to drip, it's going to flow into places that you just don't expect. I learned that the hard way. Do it. And plus, overspray, all of that is going to get into places. So now I'm using a, uh, I think this is 600 to rough this up so my paint will stick to this. The body shop already sculpted most of it up. This is the, uh, the boring work <laughs> that you have to do to make sure that this stuff uh, turns out as good as it can. I had to share this with you guys. <laughs> most of you know that I don't have a paint booth and when I tried to paint out in my garage while it wasn't unsuccessful it was just very i didn't like it you know the fumes were in my garage and um it was messy so i've been trying to paint outside <laughs> the problem is when you paint outside you can't be in direct sunlight dust floats around and this is more stuff that can get on the paint but anyway i decided to try something because i need something to hold the piece while i'm painting it let me show you what i came up with so i had a piece of fence in my storage room and I just threaded the pipe through the ladder and it's holding the part. So it allows me to, you know, come around here, do what I need to do. A zip tie is holding it right there. And what's holding the pipe is two zip ties. It seems stable. Um, and if you're in a pinch like me, you don't have like professional equipment or different setups, just this could work for you. We're just gonna do the bottom. So like I said, the bottom, I'm not too critical of the bottom because you're not gonna really, really see it. I'm still gonna try to make it look the best as I can, but I'm just gonna see. I think the problem I'm gonna have right now though is I am gonna run out of primer, so I'm gonna have to go get some more. <laughs> this pole came right from behind my storage room, so uh, yeah, I gotta be careful. I should have, I should have cleaned this thing off before I started. Yeah, so that pipe is a little dirty. What I'll do is after I prime this, I'm gonna clip this off anyway, and take it inside, let it dry, and then. I then I'll uh, clean this pipe so there's less dirt and stuff floating around. You're not going to get it perfect. You're outside, but still, try to make it as good as we can. Normally, I have a mask on, but I was actually out here just to test, but there's a lot of ventilation. It should be fine.
I've been thinking while I wait for this second round of primer to dry, you can see it flashing right there. So it's pretty much almost time for the, the last coat. I realize when I try to do the sides and the actual top, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me as a beginner because I'm trying to keep the you know keep my distance correct and try to fan it correctly. So when I do the bottom, I'm gonna use this setup for the bottom, then I'm gonna cut it down. And then I am going to move it to a stand that I 3D printed from somebody that made the stands for this specific tank. And then that allowed me to sit it flat and then be able to do the sides and the top at a, at a better angle. Because right now, I feel like I'm going to mess this up. After a few minutes, this is what we're looking like. A little uneven on that left side, but the coverage on this looks really freaking good. And I think I'm going to go ahead and base coat this. So my thought process is if I base coat it now, by the time I put the primer, because I got to run to the store and everything, and I only got like 30 minutes to an hour before this stuff dries, and then you have to basically wait because it's not going to be tacky enough to take the base coat as good as it could. So if I do it now, that gets the bottom out of the way because I'm not going to be clear coating the bottom because you don't want to clear coat around that fuel pump area and those vent lines because it could get kind of like tricky to pull it off. So I'm just going to base coat the bottom, put like a couple of good coats on there, and then the bottom's done. And then all I gotta do is when it dries or enough to handle, I can put it on the stands where it'll sit and then I can paint the sides and the top. That's my thought process. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is the color that we're working with. It's like this blue. It's a capture color. Paint code is KG053B3. So. Go away, you've been doing good. Stupid crane flies, man. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little nervous. I feel like I need to push this out just a little bit. And the reason for that is because I can get room in here to do what I need to do without having to worry of hitting the uh, ladder. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. Oh my God, that is beautiful. So this is what we're looking like so far. I did not know that this freaking paint had flake in it. Holy crap. So I don't want to spend too much time spraying the bottom. So I'm going to do one more base, but um, the uh, tip, I need to turn this to a, uh, turn the fan. You can turn this tip upward because right now I can't really get in the places that I want to. Right, so I took a pair of pliers and just slightly turned the nozzle. Last time I took that little piece out, the little yellow piece, and that caused my uh, spray to since to come out like water. <laughs> so don't take that out. I learned that from the first time, and that's why this laid so beautiful the first time. But I'm gonna put just a little bit amount, uh, a little bit more on the bottom. I'm not trying to coat the bottom like I am gonna beat the top. Because I'm trying to get through just one cam with this, and then I'm gonna clear coat the top. But hopefully, if everything goes smooth like it is. I'll only have to do this one time. <laughs> I gotta wait for the wind to stop. <laughs> this is gonna, the reason why you wanna wait is because when you're spraying the aerosol, the actual over, like the paint's just gonna move away from the actual target. So you don't want wind. So hopefully I can just kind of wait this out. So the bottom is done, but I did make a small mistake, but I, I learned from it really quick. So on those cans, you can turn the fan vertically, vertically, you can do diagonally too, or you can do it horizontal, but most people do vertical and horizontal. Well, it was horizontal the first time, which means that I had a vertical fan. So looking at the camera, I'm fanning left to right. But when I changed it, I turned it to horizontal, which means that I should have been going up 
and down but I thought it was going left to right and what happens is and what happened let me show you right there is a very small paint run and one right right down in there because I was spraying in the wrong direction so rather than spraying up and down like I was supposed to I was spraying left to right and it basically caused it to blotch on because I wasn't doing the right fan pattern for that tip direction we, we fixed it I blended it a little bit better than what it was it's on the bottom it looks fine but that's a lesson learned what I got here is a rust-oleum can you see those little tips in there so the one at the very top is the vertical fan and that's what that uh, the paint can was originally set to and then I rotated it to this one which is a horizontal fan okay but let me show you what the vertical fan looks like I'm showing you this so I can show you my mistake so with a vertical fan you want to go left to right right and you overlap okay so what I was doing I, that's the fan that I wanted okay but when I did the horizontal I did the same left to right motion and this is what happened see that that's not correct let's go up and down so that is the mistake I made and it's simply because the tip direction I wasn't using the right motion let's get this thing back inside put the zip tie on like two notches and so I'm gonna clip this one it's gonna allow me to basically hold this thing and carry it basically all right Sorry, little zip tie. I don't like wasting these, but this one's gonna be sacrificed, okay? Just like that. Now we're gonna take it to the garage. Hopefully this one zip tie holds and it doesn't fail on me. These are the stands that I was mentioning. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna wait, but the bottom, the bottom is done. So when I come back, we're gonna prime the top and we're gonna base coat the top and we're gonna clear the top today. And I'm hoping if all goes well, this will be done. These stands, if you're wondering, these were 3D printed. I am not the creator of these. I was actually in the process of making some. And then the beautiful thing about 3D printing is the open source community where people just put their models out there. There's an, there, there's an individual that I'll leave a link down below that put this out here and I just printed these and they've helped me so much. But the reason I like these so much is they elevate the gas tank. So as I paint and I have this sitting on my chairs outside, I have enough clearance to get to the bottom. And on, honestly, I have enough clearance to not really mess with what I've already done. And it's going to be like this on both sides. So these, these stands, man, thank you for contributing to the, to the community because this this has helped me out so freaking much all right fam here's what's going on it's been a few hours since i put the paint on the bottom so i waited for that to dry now it's a little bit later in the day i have the shade over my patio so now i got everything set up i got two chairs the tank stands the tank is sitting on those stands and i also let the paint out to essentially just cook on this table not well, not cook but warm up because warm paint in these cans it atomizes better it lays on better it's about 70 degrees so i think we have the perfect storm to make this happen <laughs> let's lay some paint
mostly okay. I did get a little bit of a paint run right there because I was coming over that edge. This is actually really hard because when you come over, you try to angle it in a way to get even, you know, coverage. But this side looks to be okay as well. You see it's a little tiger stripey. Um, we're gonna see if we can fix that. But uh, I mean, this is just primer, but um, you know, I just need to overlap a little bit better. But I'm actually gonna swap to my new can right here on the front. I gotta make sure I get that as well. You can still see a little bit that I missed, but this is just the first, the first run, right? Yeah, so that round came out so much better. I got to show y'all what I did to get this, but that's still a little wet up there at the top, but it's okay. I blended it a little bit better. What I did, so I'm using the automotive Rust-Oleum primer. This comes with the regular tip, but this can is the exact same as this can, but I took the tip off of one of my other Rust-Oleum cans because this is the one that you can control the uh, you can do a vertical or a horizontal fan and the output is so much smoother versus the regular output that allowed me to get the fan that I wanted so when I was fanning I was going like this versus like the standard output that was kind of blotching it on more than I wanted but you know this makes it so much easier this is like using an actual like spray gun not the same but it's very similar one thing I'm still trying to understand is how much primer and paint and you know base and top coat to use Mostly the primer, because base coat, I just do like two coats or three coats. And then top coat, I do like at least two. But, you know, this right here, for instance, you can still kind of see that, that uh, the Bondo. So, probably going to do one more coat, and I can see where I missed a spot down there. But overall, it looks good. Um, this side, yeah. Got a few more minutes before I throw another coat on. rocks man whoa crap shouldn't have done that shouldn't have done that around the paint but this stuff this freaking can't this spray tip is amazing final verdict on this primer it seems that it laid smooth uh, I'm just gonna let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I'm gonna come back and put the base coat on you can still see that bondo blending through just a little bit but I think we're gonna be good hopefully it does not blend bleed through the paint i may have to put three base uh three coats of base coat on i don't think i got enough for that but we're gonna see uh, worst case i put the base coat on and i need to put another one i'll just go get another can um tomorrow i can just wet sand it a little bit and tack it on but i think we'll be fine it'll be a lesson learned but this turned out really good man there's nothing stuck to it i think we're past that phase just gotta wait for it to dry hit it with a tack cloth and hit it with the base coat at this point i wait about 25 minutes and it's gonna dry, I'm gonna wipe it off, and hopefully, I'm hoping that nothing sits on it or touches it while I'm base coating. 
because that's the crucial stage. Um, this primer from Rust-Oleum, this uh, automotive primer, you can wet sand it after four hours. It's, uh, you can handle it after an hour. So that's why I had to paint within that hour because after that it's dry enough, dry enough to where the base coat, the next layer on top of the primer, won't actually really stick to it. So that's why you kind of have a window and if, um, if you pass that window you have to wait pretty much 48 hours where they recommend that because you have to wet sand it so it's tacky and you know the paint's gassing out but I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna go back with the base coat. Fingers crossed man. Right so it's been about 30 minutes and what I'm doing now very I'm talking very lightly I'm taking a tack cloth to this there's a few specks that have kind of surfaced like I'm talking like microscopic I can see them from far not far away but up close these little white it was like maybe pollen so you know not much is coming off on the uh, tack cloth so just trying to get some of this off there goes nothing no runs that's really what I'm kind of proud of um, it's not perfect though there's a notch right there I don't know where that came from I think that was in the uh, finish before I started and I think right there I noticed something right there and also where we had some paint run kind of hard to see but it's in there but overall uh, that first lay it came out good it came out um, you know even I didn't have any like surprises except for like right there where I kind of let up off the button but besides that I'm happy Did better, got more coverage, but I can see where I'm starting to miss a few spots, like right there with that uh, with that paint. I'm honestly a little afraid of you know making it run, so that's why I haven't been like more up close with it. But my overlap has been good, except well, it's been okay because obviously if I had overlapped it enough, you wouldn't see that. Uh, so, but no tiger stripes, so that's cool at least for the most part. So, this next coat, um, and it could be that uh, just this color working with this primer too it just takes a little bit to get it on there but you can kind of see like right in there make sure I get that coverage and um, make sure I get like right in there There's some spots I still missed I got a few more minutes before I lay the last base coat down hopefully the last base coat maybe even have to do a little bit more like a touch-up but I wish I 
<laughs> I wish I actually fixed the, um, that's my timer. I wish I actually fixed or wet sanded that spot on the primer where it was a little thick because I'm starting to see it a little bit in the paint. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem, but I wanted to do this all today because I don't want it to take like tomorrow and something comes up and I can't do it. Today's literally perfect. So if I could do it all again, I definitely would wet sand that primer and put more down, but you have to wait four hours for it to fully dry and then wet sand it. So that would have kind of threw my time completely off, but more learning, but let's get this last base coat on, hopefully. Changing up the nozzle pattern. It's the hardener that mixes with the clear coat, which is why you only got 48 hours to use this stuff. 2K Clear Max. Hot life has started. Here we go. All right, fam, I ran into a bit of a problem, but a small one. So I was letting this air out and I can see the primer is trying to come up through the through through the base coat. It's really hard to see. Right there in the center, when I take the, the flashlight off, you can see it. it's trying to come up through. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna let this kind of air out some more you know, maybe give it a, see some speckles trying to land on it. Give it a good 15 minutes, maybe 20 to dry before I even touch this. Uh, I mean, I I was gonna put another uh, layer on here cause I can still see that primer like right there. So I was gonna give it, you know, 10 minutes and put an another layer on, but I'm gonna wait about 20 to 25 minutes, put that layer on, then let this thing gas out for maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 before I even attempt to put this clear coat on. So. This is taking longer than I want it, but with paint, you cannot rush this stuff. And I can see where I should have, I may have should have let that primer dry a little bit longer, but this, I think, it, I think it'll be okay. I just need to kind of leave it alone. I want to say that's fish eyes, where it's like this paint defect, where it's like the surface could have been dirty. Something could have got on it while I was painting. But I guess what gives me hope is that it, the entire tank hasn't done it. So that's why I'm kind of just waiting, letting it air out a little bit, letting it dry. And then what I'll do is when I go back to fix that last little, little spot, I'll mist over that one spot and maybe I can cover it up. And then once I let it dry, probably wait another 25 minutes, then I'll put my clear coat on and it should be fine. That's the hope. But typically, you, if you can't get that out, you have to sand it and do it all over again. But me, I'm not looking for perfection here. I think it looks fantastic the way it is. I just want it to look a little bit better. Look at you, get, go away. We'll start that. What gives me a little bit of hope outside of that bug landing on here is that this part where it ran significantly, you can see it. 
Luckily, this part, most of this is going to be covered up, so you won't really see it. But there is no fisheye, at least, coming to the surface. You can see where there's a little bit of orange peel, but a lot of that's going to be covered up by the clear coat. But there is no ga like weird gassing that's going on. So I think we'll be fine. I think what would be really useful is something like a little can of air. That you can just kind of loosely, like, lightly blast it. But um, here we go. Oh no. My tip was in the wrong direction. I tell you what, if you made it this far, I appreciate you because not everybody would have stuck around this far, especially with stuff like this, where uh, there's a lot of different uh, opinions on how to do it the correct way, things I could have done better, the fact that I'm outside, but I'm in this position where I'm like, I got to get this done. I'm not trying to rush the process, but it's like, I don't want to wait for excuses to not do it, right? So that's why I did the whole ladder thing. That's why I'm outside painting because I don't want to paint inside the garage. Um, but. I hope you're learning something at this point in time, but I've got about 10 minutes and then we're gonna spray some clear coat on. I gotta spray my dust coat first. Then we're gonna wait about 10 minutes, let that tack on, and then we're gonna we're gonna go for the finale, baby. I lightly dusted this stuff on. That's just gonna be there. There's no way I can fix that without, you know, I just blew on it, see if it some of it would blow away, but trying to like fix that, it's there. We're just gonna have to accept it. But I am proud that I feel like I don't have a single run, a single run. Well, sorry, the primer. <laughs> but other, oh, I got one run right there. Holy God, there's one run right there, man. Crap. Well, I was trying to pride myself and say I didn't have a single run, but we do have a run. But I'll say this, man. I'm very proud of um, this side. Looks really good. I'm proud of you know what this looks like so far honestly most people would stop here it has this satin look there's actual flake in this thing man not a lot of flake because it was coming out of a, a spray nozzle i guess so you don't clog it but i'm happy with the way that this looks compared to the last time i went painting there's still so much more to learn but i think it's definitely some some of my best work but this like virtually i'm not gonna say virtually but there's not a lot of orange peel definitely on the edges but just looking at just just straight left and right i don't see much orange peel orange peel at all so i'm excited to see what this clear coat looks like hopefully the bugs stay off of it make sure you wear your mask when you're using this stuff spray paint i mean you still need to wear a mask but this stuff is super nasty all right here we go Super light, just a dust coat. So, I still got my mask on, so if I sound a little weird, that's why, but super light dust coat, and that's so the clear coat will actually stick to uh, the surface. But if you put it on too thick, it won't really stick as well, or at least in theory. So, you put a light coat on, 
let it get tacky. I'm gonna wait about uh, right at 10 minutes. And then we're gonna go with a, a somewhat of a wet coat, not super wet. And then we're gonna come, let that dry and then come back over with an even wetter coat. My anxiety levels right now are through the freaking roof because this is when stuff tends to like want to just, oh, what's that? Let me just kind of land on it. Yeah, at some point I will be getting some type of, not a spray booth, but something that I can kind of like, like a tent is, is kind of what I want and I can just tear it down because I don't want it in my garage. I could do it in, in my garage, but I kind of like being out here. The cleanup is less messy. Um, but anyway, I'm waiting for this to dry or, you know, do its thing. But yeah, this is when I have my tweezers kind of just watching to make sure nothing just sits on it. Stress levels, this is where the highest I've been so far. <laughs> Oh, what is that? Gosh, they got on my paint, man. Look at that right there. Oh, man. Look who came out to play. The fish eye. It's really starting to show now. This is the first time it showed on this side when I start spraying the clear. Could be because I didn't let the previous clear dry I don't know that's not good that looks really bad it's super weird to me man that it started you know fish eyeing when I started clearing but it didn't do that when I was painting on that side so I don't know we're gonna see how it looks when it dries hopefully it doesn't look bloody awful <laughs> um, it's nowhere near as bad as what that fender was when I first started painting but the fish eye man I got some contamination somewhere, but I'm going to see if I can work through it. Maybe I can razor blade it after it dries, but if it's too many, I don't know. Right, so basically what's going on, the, I thought about this earlier when I first did, when I first laid the first uh, base coat down. The lower, I guess the primer, what those little bubbles look like, it looks like the, the, basically the paint is gassing out and it didn't have enough time to dry. So basically the surface is drying faster than the paint underneath. So the paint is trying to dry, the, the, the lower layers are trying to dry so it's poking through as, as it's gassing out and it's causing those little bubbles. So at this point, man, I'm gonna, wait another five minutes add another layer of clear coat um, because at this point I might as well continue just to see what it turns out like right so worst case I got to respray it like cut everything down and respray it oh god I hope I don't I hate doing that we'll see all right so I'm gonna change the strategy of just a little bit because I'm missing this quite a bit
I know, I know, I know this is super dangerous. But I don't want it outside no longer than it has to be. The good news is, is I have uh, almost surgical hands. Now it is gonna stick a little bit. There's gonna be a little, some areas like, like that, but compared to what it was, you know, like I said, I don't want it sitting outside no longer than it has to be. It's in a somewhat safe environment. I'm gonna cut the lights off, let this stuff dry. I'll see this thing in 24 hours. I know it's gonna look awful because I know it's gonna gas out, but it smells awful in here. It smells like paint right now, so I'm just gonna let this thing be. We're done. I really, really, really hope the paint gods bless me with a with an accept with an acceptable finish i'm trying my best man please please come out okay please before we move forward i gotta give a quick shout out to my folks over at patreon we built this little community inside of this big community and each active patron gets a spot on my wall i just added seven new people so it's growing bit by bit. I want to fill this wall up. But this is only for those diehard Brandon Picasso fans. If you're interested in that, interested in that, I'll leave a link down in the description, but let's get back to the video. This is the final result, folks. It's been about, let's say 20 hours since I laid this clear coat, not full 24 hours, but I can tell you it is dry to the touch. I'm not going to get too crazy with it, smudging it, but it is to the point where it is not keeping my fingerprints on the clear coat. So I can tell you, uh, I'm satisfied, but I do wonder how I could have improved this because the finish is not perfect. So if we look down here, that looks beautiful. I'm always good at doing smaller things, but when I start moving into bigger panels is when it starts to kind of fall apart. So we got one run, really hard to see, right there, dead center. And then there's the run on this side which is really noticeable. We got a fish eye right there as well. I wasn't gonna be too excited. Yeah, you see that right there. I wasn't too excited about that because I knew it was just gonna do its thing. It was gonna fish eye and uh, we had that run, but there's there's little imperfections all across this actually. Piece of lint. So I do wonder though, these sides, I went back and looked at the video when I was actually spraying the primer on and I do wonder why I have this finish. So you can see, see the finish is not complete like a mirror. Look up top right, I'm gonna put the C right, right up there and where the light actually shines into the paint from the ceiling and the garage windows, it's not, it's not perfect, man. It's because I got some imperfections in there. But when I come on top, it looks more like glass. When I come to the side, it looks less like glass. And also, this was the panel or side of the tank where we had that degassing where you were seeing the bubbles. A lot of that has cleared up. Actually, you can see it's really hard. You have to really look for it. There it is. So that did clear up for the most part, but I do think that is because I did not allow the paint to dry enough in the surface was drying faster than the paint or it was i don't know i i just think i i wasn't allowing this stuff to dry show you this side oh snap just a little too hard i'm a little disappointed about that so um we also got that paint run right there but we also have that weird like not glassy finish and as we get down further, you can see there typically you get an orange peel on the edges because um, there's not a lot of paint there. There's not a lot of clear coat there. So you got to be careful when you're sanding that stuff down. But everything that was small, it looked good. But there is a little bit of flake in this paint. Not a lot. You look close enough. There is some flake. So I would love to see this in the sun. But uh, looking at the top, that part looks like glass. Right here on the front, there's that uh, that run that I had in the primer. There is a bubble right there. I can actually fix that. I can take a razor to it, or I can take some 2000 sand grit sandpaper that I plan on doing and leveling some of that out. So I'm not too worried about that. I am considering um, sanding this down 
and buffing the clear cut out, see if I can get a smoother finish. I'm trying to understand, is it because I didn't lay enough primer down and made sure that that's, that surface was flat? You can still kind of see an outline of what was under the primer before I started painting. I just feel like maybe that surface just was not perfect before I started putting the base down. Because when I, I went back and looked at how I was putting the base down, I've actually been practicing spray painting with some uh, on some cardboard with some uh, with some just regular black rust-oleum, and I've been able to better my technique. So I don't feel like my technique was fully the issue here. Yeah, I got a few paint runs. Yes, I, I did mess that up. But as far as like that that big inconsistency in the texture, I don't know if it was the base coat um, or maybe it was the primer. I mean, uh, or the uh, clear coat. But I didn't. I don't think I had any major runs in the clear coat. So if at all. So I, I, I feel like I've gotten better, but I'm just trying to understand compared to when I painted my fender, where I went wrong. Let me show you the fender. This fender is the one that I messed up really, really bad. And while it is not perfect compared to what it was, it looks so much better. But the difference between this fender and how I painted the gas tank is when I, uh, uh, wet sanded or dry, I can't remember if I wet sanded or dry sanded it, but I got all the clear coat off that was messed up, or at least the majority of it, except for the edges. I then wet sanded the base coat, and before I put clear coat down, I put another two coats of base down on top of that wet sanded surface, and that made that surface very smooth before I put that last base coat down. But if you look at this, I know it's dirty, look how clear that is. Again, it's not perfect. You can see where I had some imperfections right there at the tip, but look at that. That is a big difference compared to that. But looking at the top of this, that is more in line with the front fender. That is why I'm trying to understand where I went wrong to, you know, for the next time I can try to fix it. And, and it may be that that I need to just lay more primer down, lay more base coat down, lay more clear coat down and just practice. I do plan on practicing more. But let me know what you guys think down below. Seeing everything from the moment I started priming, I did not do the body work. So I didn't lay that Bondo down. Um, but I could, when I was rubbing my hands over certain surfaces, I could feel kind of how it was a little gritty in certain areas, but maybe again, I should have just put some more primer down and maybe I needed to wet sand it. But let me know what y'all think down below. Again, it's a, $70 paint job. I think this is what this is maybe 80 80 bucks. So honestly Considering where this was before I'm satisfied with how it looks, but I still want I want to get better And so I feel like I have done better compared to the first time I start painting But there's still so much more to learn so much more technique that I need to hone my skills on So let me know what y'all think again down below But as always thanks for listening to my story if you want to see what this tank looks like on the bike This is simply just me painting it. You can click right here and check that out. As always, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.